From the classroom to international acclaim. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 successful Harvard students. We are, we are in a revolutionary period, and I, I'd like it to be elevated by a higher sense of purpose. For this list, we're not just focusing on those celebrities with Harvard degrees, but whose careers since their academic days stand out. While some graduates have become iconic figures on the worldwide stage, others left Harvard to pursue their destinies and innovate ideas. I went to great schools, I came out, um, I practiced law for a while and then tried to get a job on Wall Street because I thought it was the most interesting, exciting place to go in New York City, a financial town. But all of our choices are known for their success, wealth, influence, popularity, fame, power and the respect they've earned. Number 10, Matt Damon. Having grown up here, um, I think I had a, a one way of looking at, at Harvard and, and a kind of a towny view of, of, of the school and, um, and suddenly walking through as a, uh, as a prospective student, I just started to really take in how impressive it was. Growing up in the crimson-colored town of Cambridge, Massachusetts, this eventual Academy Award winner focused his sights on Harvard, literally and figuratively. Who am I? You're U.S. government property. You're a malfunctioning $30 million weapon. The future star of the Jason Bourne franchise first enrolled in 1988 and kicked off his acting career that same year with a small role in the film Mystic Pizza. Mom, do you want my green stuff? <laughs> That's called the tamale steamer. It's the best part. It's the shit steam. Don't eat it. Despite a promising three years on campus, he failed to earn a degree after dashing off to L.A. to appear in the box office bomb, Geronimo, an American legend. They didn't have to kill them just to get their horses. No, they didn't. Two decades later, Matt Damon has graduated to Hollywood immortality and in the famous words of Will Hunting... Do you like apples? Yeah. yeah. Well, I got a number. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Number nine, Steve Ballmer. And uh, most of what I learned, uh, I learned at Harvard University. I thought I'd try to summarize that in about nine easy steps. This 1977 magna cum laude grad was a busy guy during his Harvard era. He was a manager for the Crimson football squad, spent time at both the Harvard Crimson newspaper and the Harvard Advocate magazine, and was a mathematical wizard who outscored fellow student Bill Gates. Push me. Ah, it's always about you. It's always about you. Today, NBA fans know Steve Ballmer as the overly excited owner of the Los Angeles Clippers. You're going to be hardcore. 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 But his 14-year tenure as the CEO of Microsoft earned him a swanky ranking on the Forbes 400. His business acumen makes rivals nervous, while his philanthropy makes young students smile. He's Steve Ballmer, the energetic billionaire. If people want to do a startup and, and, and have this kind of real entrepreneurial avalanche, the opportunity to have the best business minds and the best technical minds is phenomenal. Number eight, John F. Kennedy. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. The 35th president of the United States first walked onto the Harvard campus in the mid-1930s and became everyone's favorite party planner when he was put on the 1936 edition of the annual Freshman Smoker. He also showed off his natural athleticism as a football and swim team member. But eventually, he turned to more serious matters, focusing on his interest in politics and producing a thesis entitled Why England Slept, which became a best-selling book. I am talking about genuine peace, the kind of peace that makes life on Earth worth living, the kind that enables men and nations to grow and to hope and build a better life for their children. Decorated military service followed, and although Kennedy once seemed destined to become a journalist, the death of his older brother Joseph propelled him to become the family's next great politician. The rest, as they say, is history. There's only one word to describe the picture here, and that's grief and 
much of it. It's official, as of just a few moments ago. The President of the United States is dead. Number seven, Conan O'Brien. This time you snuck into the room to see I, what the- I, I sneaked into the room. Snuck isn't a word, Conan. And you went to Harvard and you should know that. <laughs> With a father who was a professor of medicine at the school, this red-haired underclassman followed suit and enrolled at Harvard in 1981. There, he became a comedy writer for The Lampoon, and within a few years of leaving, he was one of the TV industry's most promising writers. Yes, we were almost as unpopular then as we are now. I hear you. Only now we're older and uglier. <laughs> Yes, I seem to remember I was quite the non-entity. Conan was creating classic bits for Saturday Night Live during the late 80s and led The Simpsons into surrealism by the early 90s. Homer, there's a family of possums in here. I call the big one Bitey. Despite a fledgling career behind the scenes, O'Brien ultimately became one of America's most beloved late-night talk show hosts. Got to do Whether it's his unique sketches or zany voices, Conan's combination of intellect and physical comedy makes his daily performances a treat to watch. Snuck, past and past part of sneak. <laughs> Number six, Al Gore. Uh, I don't think there's any position with as much uh, potential for bring about to, to bring about change as uh, the position of president of the United States. Uh, Which and you had for two minutes. Well, <laughs> well, I, well, that's an old story. <laughs> this Ivy Leaguer once struggled academically at Harvard, but a sudden reawakening inspired him to graduate with distinction and with an interest in environmental matters that followed him throughout his career. You can see what I have seen all these years. It just keeps going up. It is relentless. Gore shocked his fellow graduates by enlisting in the army in 1969 to aid his father's political career, and later shocked opponents with his own swift rise to political prominence. By 1992, Gore had been elected U.S. vice president and was instrumental in the worldwide advancement of the information superhighway. We still need highways and water lines. But we also need communications lines that can allow us to take advantage of the high-performance computers. Although Gore didn't single-handedly invent the internet, he's managed to effectively transform how a new generation perceives the world, not to mention his efforts in raising awareness on climate change. I believe this is a moral issue. It is your time to seize this issue. It is our time to rise again to secure our future. Number five, Barack Obama. You know what I would do if I were president, Mr. President? I would make same-sex divorce illegal, then see how bad they want it. I think that's why you're not president, and that's a good thing. While Al Gore was innovating technology in the early 90s, this man was gaining recognition by becoming the first African-American president of the Harvard Law Review. I think it's real important to keep the focus on uh, the, the broader world out there and, and see that uh, uh, for a lot of kids, uh, the doors that have been open to me aren't open to them. Armed with a Juris Doctor and his knack for vocal performance, Barack Obama gained a devoted following as an Illinois state senator and was elected as the first African-American president of the United States in 2008 and the eighth president to have graduated from Harvard. Some 232 years after the Declaration of Independence, an African-American, a black man, has been elected president of the United States. Agree or disagree with his politics, Obama's accomplishments are unprecedented. And he's a political trailblazer of the highest order. Believe it. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America. Number four, Sumner Redstone. Now, naturally, if you win big in business, money follows. But that shouldn't be your objective. Your objective should be to win. As one of America's most iconic businessmen, this 1944 Harvard graduate and World War II veteran coined the phrase, content is king. People don't watch CBS. They watch what's on it. 
They watch Survivor. They watch the Bette Midler Show, a future of They watch the NFL Super Bowl. After earning his Bachelor of Laws, also from Harvard, Redstone served as CEO of National Amusements during the 60s and invested heavily in Hollywood's elite movie studios. The finance whiz unloaded his film stock in the early 80s and, soon after, became a key figure of Viacom. Redstone was instrumental in turning the company into a media empire that included Paramount Pictures, at a time when the company was producing successes like Forrest Gump, Braveheart, and Titanic. I'm flying! Jack. And so, as he transformed American pop culture, this modern media giant kept wheeling and dealing all the way to the bank. I'm the boss. She works. She's the CEO, and you're the CEO? I'm the CEO. She's a You president. won't even give her the CEO job? No. She's your daughter. I know, but that's the way I control... Your daughter? Viacom, no, Viacom and CBS by yeah, controlling the stock. Yeah, but it's your family. Sumner. You want I'm to here to pitch for her. I tell you what. No. You want to give away what you have to your family? Be my guest. Number three, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I pledge myself to a new deal for the American people. He was an experienced sailor by the age of 16 and fluent in both German and French. As the editor-in-chief of the Harvard Crimson, Franklin Delano Roosevelt watched his fifth cousin, Theodore Roosevelt, become president of the United States. And over 30 years later, he would take his own oath as commander-in-chief. FDR was elected to the presidency four times during Hitler's reign in Germany. And Roosevelt's policies shaped the world long after his final breath in 1945. Though not a stellar student, Roosevelt was raised to be a leader, and he embraced the role fearlessly. Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Number two, Mark Zuckerberg. There's a lot of really smart people here, and they're, um, a lot of them are making decisions on where they're going to work when they graduate in the next couple of weeks. So this is a great time to come. Originally a Harvard dorm room project, Facebook has become an integral part of global communication and instant connections. Mark Zuckerberg never finished his Harvard education, but his ideas and astute business acumen opened the doors for a social phenomenon unlike any other. People want to go on the internet and check out their friends, so why not build a website that offers that friends, pictures, profiles, whatever you can visit, browse around, maybe it's someone you just met at a party. But I'm not talking about a dating site, I'm talking about taking the entire social experience of college and putting it online. I can't feel my legs. I know. I'm totally psyched about this, too. As chairman and CEO of Facebook, Zuckerberg has become synonymous with a new epoch in world history and has, along with fellow billionaires like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, pledged to donate a majority of his earnings to charity. A Stay new count of the top 10 shipping. gifts of 2013, conducted by the Chronicle of Philanthropy, reveals that the year's largest donation came from Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg and his wife, Priscilla Chan. He's a seemingly accidental billionaire with a most impressive set of skills, and he's putting them to good use. It doesn't really matter to some extent what the press says. It matters what the people who use our services tell us and what their feedback is. And that's what we're, that's what we're really focused on. Before we hand the diploma to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I said, uh, hey, um, where's Harvard? <laughs> he said, well, you see that, that gate over there. If you can walk through that gate, you'll, you'll, you'll be there. So I found the gate and was able to walk through. And it was the beginning of a very happy four years. The first president to live in the White House left after about three months, but not before writing these famous words about the building. May none but honest and wise men ever rule under this roof. He never thought in terms of pure party politics. He thought about what was right for the American people. And that's a great lesson for presidents to learn. You don't represent your party as much as you represent the people. If you do what's right for the most people, what you think's right, you're going to be a great president. You can make the world fairer for everyone. Expect honesty from yourself and each other. Demand and create truly equal opportunity. When I was in Harvard, I smoked weed every day. I cheated every test and started all the yay. I got a deaf posse, you got a bunch of dudes. Number one, Bill Gates. He and Paul Allen really saw from the beginning the kind of potential that it had to change the lives of all of us. Money, 
power, respect. Bill Gates embodies the idea that you must pave your own path to greatness. Once a dorm room geek, this human dream factory made a powerful impact during his brief tenure at Harvard University, which began in 1973. But he swiftly departed to realize the visionary idea that would become Microsoft, which ultimately rocked the world of computer software. They saw that this was going to be an incredible force, an incredible dynamic for the society, and recognized the, the moment. Gates has often been recognized as the wealthiest man on the planet. But together with his wife, the couple has donated over $28 billion to charity. You know, hopefully that'll influence more people to give at all levels of wealth. Uh, you know, I'm certainly having fun and I get to share uh, what's, what's working and what's not. In other words, Bill Gates walks the walk and most importantly, he talks the talk. I hope you will judge yourselves not on your professional accomplishments alone, but also on how well you have addressed the world's deepest inequities, on how well you treated people a world away who have nothing in common with you but their humanity. Do you agree with our list? Who's your favorite successful Harvard student? For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. I'm gonna press this. Uh, don't touch that, please. Shh.